preparedness for the next pandemic, and we can get a lot of benefits out of that. People don't like flu and the common cold, and you know we can build tools that over time will get rid of those as well. From a, a justice standpoint or just a, a moral standpoint, do you want to know how this started? Uh, you know, there, I wouldn't. Yes. Uh, Bill Gates. Yes, we should investigate these things, but it's not directly tied to a, the particular actions to save lives at this point. Uh, yeah. What's going on, everyone? Jeremy here from The Quartering. And uh, Bill Gates sure has been chirping a lot this week, in particular about the man whom with he is obsessed, and that is Elon Musk, because I think Bill always has felt deeply, deeply inadequate, uh, given he's invented almost nothing, and, uh, and Elon has uh, done actual things. He's running his mouth now that he's deeply afraid of what, what Elon's uh, future ownership of Twitter will be whining about how he got outed essentially for shorting Tesla stock, pretending that, oh, well, that doesn't mean uh, I don't like Tesla and, and a whole lot of other things that are just ridiculous. One of the things that I thought was funny was this really wasn't public knowledge out there um, about Bill Gates shorting Tesla, essentially betting against Tesla's success. And I guess like, you know, maybe shorting doesn't necessarily mean uh, you're betting against the environment, but it certainly doesn't seem like you believe in the company. It's not working out for him. Obviously, he's losing a lot of money because, you know, Tesla stock is uh, doing excellent. But I mean, that's how much hate he has for Elon, I think. You know, he's got a massive short position. Uh, Bill or uh, Elon called him out last week. Bill Gates says shorting Tesla isn't hurting environment. Elon has accused Bill Gates of damaging his environmental credibility by shorting Tesla stock. Microsoft core founder said he's simply diversifying his investments. Asked by the BBC whether he had a bet against the electric car pioneer, Gates said that the move had nothing to do with climate change. No, of course it didn't. <coughs> Excuse me. It had everything to do with you being jealous. The popularity of electric cars will lead to more competition for selling those cars, Gates said in an interview on the BBC Today. So there's a difference between electric cars being adopted and companies becoming infinitely valuable. While both Musk and Gates donate heavily to climate protection causes, the two have a long history of public spats with disagreements on issues, including the, pa the lockdowns, electric trucks, which Bill Gates idiotically said just could, it doesn't work, even though Tesla uses their very own electric semis to move vehicles between facilities and has have working prototypes. Uh, you know, he's just like, it's, it's just one of those things where like, look, I'm sure Bill and, and Elon both know literally more about literally everything than I do. But when I can like very easily see that they have a prototype, I can see it working. I can see it use it being functional to come out and say that just wouldn't work is absurd. Um, and it's not following the science as Bill Gates would want you to. Then he talks about Bill Gates says Elon could make Twitter worse on misinformation. Bill said on Wednesday, it's unclear if his rival, by the way, there, nobody sees them as rivals. Um, Elon Musk's t Twitter takeover will result in a positive change, saying they actually could make the social media apps problems worse when it comes to misinformation. See, the thing is, though, for us regular people, we have a different definition of misinformation. For me, misinformation is something knowingly manufactured or knowingly spread when it's false that is damaging or could hurt people. What they say is, if you have an opinion that's different than theirs, it's misinformation. We saw this many times with doctors being banned off Twitter and Facebook and YouTube and all sorts of things, only to find out months later that some of them were correct about some of the things they were saying, but it didn't matter. He could actually make it worse, Gates said at the event. That's not his track record. His track record with Tesla and SpaceX is pretty mind-blowing with putting together great teams of engineers and taking the people who worked in those fields in a less bold way and really showing them up. I kind of doubt it will happen this time. 
but we should have an open mind and never us underestimate Elon. So he's bet he's betting against. I'm sure, you know, if there's a way that he can have uh, some sort of short position against Tesla or whatever. I mean, he's also talking about. Elon was talking about taking it public again, uh, bringing it back into the public sector, which would be pretty hilarious. Um, Musk, of course, has pledged to alter the strict content moderation policies under Twitter's current leadership. Nobody really knows exactly what he's going to do, but everybody's speculating and everybody's speculating about it in like a negative way, in a way that's saying like, oh, well, Things are just going to get worse, and and uh, you know uh, misinformation is going to be everywhere. Again, I think that really comes down to how you define misinformation because there is multiple definitions for that. There's like the Webster's Dictionary definition, which most of us know, and then there's the like literal uh, um, uh, mainstream media, the practical. Uh, definition of misinformation which is just information that doesn't match whatever the you know pre-ascribed narrative is and it's it's just really bizarre to me that that bill every time bill gates has to open his mouth he opens his mouth and talks junk about elon i never i never see um Elon talking like that about Bill Gates, unless he's asked, Hey, Elon's or Bill Gates said this stupid thing about you. Uh, what do you have to say about that? You know, I think that shorting Tesla is a personal thing. I think that he, he quietly does want, um, Tesla to fail. They also talked about, here's what Twitter could do to grow the company. If advertisers end up fleeing the site after selling to Elon, by the way, they won't advertisers will continue to go where the people are. And as long as, as long as Elon brings the people, then it'll be fine. Um, the drama that's already enveloped Twitter in the wake of its sale agreement with Elon Musk last week offers a peek into what the platform might look like under Musk, a future that could force the company to find other ways to boost profitability that would take a hit by fleeing advertisers who became skittish about using Twitters to reach audiences. And again, I don't believe there'll be any real number that, that of these people that will do that. What we saw from his own tweets is to say a more toxic environment and not positive for advertisers, said Brian Weiser, global president of business intelligence, probably funded by, you know, certain uh, political leaning people. Musk, who CNBC reported Thursday, could appoint himself as temporary CEO upon closing the acquisition, has offered some clues as to how he might boost Twitter's revenue, considering his views on content moderation and debt finance acquisition as well as Twitter's enormous reliance on advertising and negative cash flow last year. If advertisers get spooked, here's a few things the company could do. They fire everyone who works here, works there, Twitter. Musk has said layoffs could be on the table, per the Washington Post and Bloomberg. You could cut half the headcount and barely notice, one Twitter investor told Twitter, told Insider. Last week of the company's 7,500 full-time employees regarding its count at the end of the year. If he, if he really cut that deep, 50%, that would be pretty spicy. After laying off or losing employees and cutting costs, Musk could restructure Twitter, then take it public again in three years, as the Wall Street Journal reported Wednesday, that Musk told investors he is consider considering. The freemium Twitter. Many have suggested Twitter could expand its freemium or subscription-based offerings. Twitter already has Twitter Blue, which allows users to undo a tweet or and test the edit button but not entirely avoid ads for $2.99 a month. But CEO, current CEO, Paraj Argwal said in February that Twitter Blue was not critical to the company's reaching its revenue goal of $7.5 billion. Twitter Blue members, Musk suggested that Twitter Blue members could get verified check marks and not see advertising according to a now deleted Musk tweet, according to a New York Times report. Twitter would also be a cost free for casual users, but maybe a slight cost for commercial and government users monetizing tweets in some fashion per Reuters and the Washington Post. I mean, sure, I think that there's a lot that you could do to monetize it. I don't know if I would if I would back the um I don't know if I'd be particularly interested in paying money to use Twitter. Uh, you know, half of its value, you know, the, you know, I don't know. It, it's in, it's it if maybe 
it had some sort of additional features. I couldn't care less about being verified. I don't know. There's tons of lunatics that would pay for that. But then what does verified really mean? If you charge for verification, um, then all you're really saying is this check mark means somebody's paying three dollars a month. If you wanted like some other different kind of notification or verification, I suppose maybe that would be a thing. And the end of today's Elon Musk coverage the market is finally starting to believe that Elon Musk will buy Twitter. Late, you know, and that's you know, the stock price is now kind of leveled off and it's finally kind of setting in for people, which is why you're seeing stuff like this. New York Times, where it's a hit piece on Elon, Musk South Africa past gets blowback. They write this piece about him, and which is summarized by Cigar and Jetty very, very well. And this New York Times itself reports Elon Musk, one, had non-white friends growing up in apartheid South Africa. Two, his father was an anti-apartheid politician. Three, he literally left so he wouldn't serve in the apartheid military. They still insinuate he is racist. I mean, what a hilarious way. And then you see Glenn Greenwald. This is the kind of punishment the corporate media doles out to anyone whom they perceive as their enemy and especially who oppose the censorship regime on which they rely. Reporting on Musk is obviously valid and necessary. This isn't reporting. It's deceit and punishment. What this is also is that you know, think about what's going to happen when, um, you know, you can actually find people that you want reporting on topics that you're interested in, because that's very difficult to do now because with between shadow bands and, you know, some algorithmic suppression and this and that, they're worried that you're going to get your news from people like Glenn Greenwald or other Twitter users the mainstream media. This is why CNN writes what they write about Elon too. So it's a it's a pretty hilarious and transparent double standard, but it's been interesting to watch. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you click that red subscribe button down below and we'll talk to you again real soon.